Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for um, another live stream. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and health educator. I'm so glad that you've been able to find some time to join me with this discussion. We're going to be talking about pregnancy related issues and it's on the back of um, an encounter I had recently with one of my viewers and they just wanted some advice about what's right, what's wrong to do in um, pregnancy, particularly early pregnancy. And I know many um, women probably familiar with this, but there's so many ladies who have um, recently become pregnant and are exposed to so many different pieces of information here and there, usually well-meaning. So well-meaning um, advice from friends or family, well-meaning advice and suggestions about what you should do or shouldn't do, what you should eat or you shouldn't eat. So that's the background for today's video where we're looking at um, what are the best tips to follow, what is the best um, advice to follow if you're newly pregnant. That's what we're talking about today. So thank you so much for joining me. Welcome. Where are you watching from? Um, if this is your first time, I'm so glad that you're here. Please don't forget to click the like button if this kind of information is useful to you. It's been really a while since I did the live stream. It's just been very, very busy. <laughs> so thank you to um, past subscribers. Thank you guys for keeping the faith and for um, continuing to keep an eye on the videos on the channel and continuing to watch. Really, really appreciate you guys. So let us get started. Um, we're going to go, there's so many different things. I think I have about maybe for what, 10, 11 queued up. Um, and of course, I welcome any questions or comments. And in fact, if there are any myths or if there are any ideas that you've heard that don't sound exactly right, um, please pop them in the chats, um, the comments of the chat. Let's see what they are. Let's talk about them. If you want to ask any questions on the topic, please feel free. Um, and of course, if you want to get in touch with me after the video, um, you know, we cannot consult and we do not consult on YouTube. It's not a consulting platform, but I do have a um, an email health information service where if you want to use that to get some clarification or direction on symptoms or concerns, please shoot them in that direction. The link will be in the description box below. So let us begin talking about pregnancy myth and let me share this. So hopefully you can see the screen. Let me just double check the first one. I want to talk about, let me just double check that this is showing um, on YouTube. So let me just see what it looks like. Give me a second. Uh, let's just see, is this live? Is this showing? Um, I don't know. So let's see. So, oh yeah, okay. Ah, yes, very good. Okay, so this is showing marvellous. So the first one we're talking about is what you should do or what you should, what, what should it be in, in, um, in your pregnant? What should you be doing with regards to exercise? So the myth is that when a woman is pregnant, she shouldn't exercise because exercise may be harmful to her or the baby. Um, and for that reason, many women stop, particularly those who were active before they got pregnant. For that reason, they stop and they don't do anything about their fitness, fearing that they might inadvertently do something um, to hurt themselves or the baby. Now, so this is one of those things that we have to balance because in the first instance, um, it is safe for a woman to exercise when she's pregnant. But what is important is the type of exercise, the form of exercise. So first of all, let's look at the benefits of exercise in the first instance um, when a woman is pregnant. 
And of course, the benefits are in terms of remaining healthy, remaining active, um, keeping a healthy weight, um, helping your blood flow, which would only be good for both yourself and the baby. Um, and keeping fit uh, during your pregnancy means that, um, for example, if you have a, if you end up having a C-section or even if you have a vaginal delivery and you're looking at wounds, I'm talking about wounds like cuts or episiotomies that happen with the vaginal delivery and the tissues have to heal, then you're more likely for them to heal faster because your body is already supple thanks to your exercise and the muscles are able to, muscles and tissues are able to come back together very quickly. So those are some of the benefits of, um, of making sure that you're exercising. Now, the, the challenges that some women would um, experience when it comes to exercise is in the type of exercise that might be too intense. So it might be that the exertion, they're overexerting themselves. Those are problems that can result from exercise in pregnancy. So if you're being, if you're getting yourself involved in very, very high impact or intense exercises that might exhaust you very quickly and um, that might get you dehydrated very quickly. So you need to be careful with things like that. And um, other examples are contact sports where there's a risk that you might be hit, particularly your bump might be hit, for example, kickboxing or judo, for example. Um, or if you do exercises or yoga, for example, where you're lying on your back, the flat of your back for a very long period of time, especially um, well, when you're well into your second trimester, such exercises could be um, risky. Um, the one of lying flat on your back for prolonged periods because your bump is now at a large size and your bump is pressing on your blood vessels. So that could affect the flow of blood um, to your heart that could make you feel unwell. OK, so those are some of the concerns. But outside of that, um, activities like swimming, activities like walking, um, um, Pilates or yoga, um, those kind of activities, um, cycling, for example, um, those kind of activities where the risk, where there is a risk that is not so high of falling down or um, injuries where you tumble, things like that, you can um, partake in such activities. So just be careful, things like horse riding, skiing, gymnastics, like I've said, high impact exercises, you need to be cautious when it comes to anything in that direction. So please be on the lookout for, for that. Exercise is of benefit when you're pregnant. There are clear advantages both to you and your baby. We talked about blood flow and blood supply, so please be aware of that. But if you're not sure, ask your doctor, ask your midwife or ask your nurse about what kind of exercises that you should be involved in at, at different stages of your pregnancy. So it is wrong to say to a woman who's been active before she felt pregnant to stop, completely stop her exercise. No, what she should be doing is what she should be doing is continue to be active, but be careful in terms of the intensity, pacing yourself so you're not getting exhausted, avoiding um, exercises where you could be at risk of falling down, where you could inadvertently hurt your bump and cause um, injury to um, the baby. So that's the first one as the first myth I wanted us to tackle with regards to pregnant women and exercise. I'm just going to be going from one thumbnail to the other and we're going to the second one I have on cue which is about pregnant women should eat for two. Now this is a common myth in some parts of the world and it's still pop quite popular that um when a woman is pregnant, she's now eating for two and therefore she can just widely increase the amount of food that she, she consumes or that she takes. So it's a funny one. And by the way, I have a video on this topic. I think it's probably two and a half or three months old. So if you go and look on the channel um, and just scroll down the video play, uh, one of the video or one of the video playlists, I think it's probably in the pregnancy playlist as well. Please have a look and you'll find that video where I talk about it in great extent. But the bottom line is that a pregnant woman is not supposed to be eating for two. OK, so we need to come away from that mindset. The, the fact that you're pregnant, even with the pregnancy cravings that you have, that does not equate to eating for two. Eating for two means that you're looking at excessive amount of weight gain during pregnancy. OK, we agree and it is ideal for a woman to gain some amount of weight during pregnancy. And we say between 12 to 15 kilograms. It varies. It can depend on the woman's size or weight before she became pregnant. But that weight will make will be made up of her baby, 
So the baby itself, as it's growing, the placenta, the bag of fluid, the amniotic fluid, um, the womb itself getting bigger. So different tissues, your breast getting bigger, all the tissues that your body <laughs> that's changing as you're getting ready to have your baby. Um, and then a small part of that will be um, extra cal extra energy because pe the pregnancy is a high a uh, high metabolism, high per dynamic state. So your body does need more energy to cope with all the activity that's going on. But that is no excuse for you to say you're going to eat for two in order to accommodate that. Actually, just a little increase in the amount of calories that you're taking is enough to cater for both you and your baby. So no um, don't go on, don't go on a nine month, um, don't go on a nine month binge because you think, oh, I'm pregnant, right? I can completely relax and eat anything I want because that's not going to cut it in your pregnancy. Um, and on the back of that, we will, of course, emphasize a healthy diet so that you're eating foods that are rich in protein um, of benefit because, of course, your body is doing a lot of breakdown and putting together lots of new tissues being formed. Your body is going to need fats. Baby's brain and, and spinal cord and neurological system is going to need fat. So that needs to be part of your diet. You're going to need carbohydrates as well. You're going to need supplements. You're going to need all manner of nutrients. So a healthy mix of the different um a healthy mix of the different food types is what we recommend in your pregnancy. So don't starve yourself of any particular food group. Eating in moderation is what we'd encourage. So I'm not saying that you can't have um, treats or you can't have, you know, some snacks here and there. Of course, in moderation. So it's really important. So we're not eating for two. OK, so that's the second myth busted. Closely related to that one is this. Now, this is. I've just put it as pregnant women should only eat blah, blah, blah. So what exactly is it that pregnant women should only eat? So you're going to have lots of people tell you, oh, it's not, you shouldn't eat that. You shouldn't. <laughs> as soon as you tell them, tell the world, as soon as you tell us that you're pregnant, we're going to start telling you, do this, do that. Don't eat this, don't eat that. Or it's okay to eat this or it's not okay to eat that. I'm sure there are many women who can identify and who can relate with that. But what is the truth? So we're going to go through a range of different types of foods and drinks. I've got a few that you can see on the thumbnail here, hopefully. Um, so I'm just going to talk about, go through them. So the most basic one, let's start with the most basic one. Let's get those ones out of the way. So first of all, alcohol. Alcohol is a complete no. Just It's just no. No, because we know that alcohol can affect the baby negatively. There is a condition known as the fetal alcohol syndrome that can arise in women who take alcohol. And please don't think that, oh, if I just have a little bit, it will be fine. Remember that all of us are different in the way that we metabolize or break down things, including alcohol. So what might be little and not cause any harm to one person could actually cause significant of harm to another person. So because we cannot agree or say, well, um, 10 mils of alcohol is fine across the board for everybody, we have agreed in terms of the scientific world, the medical world to say, please do not have alcohol when you're pregnant because um, it can affect your baby. You can either have a baby that grows up or develops abnormalities in their organs. You can have a baby that is um, premature um, or baby that doesn't, it is not, doesn't come through um, alive. Different possible conditions that can arise from alcohol use. So we do not accept it at all. It is a no, okay? Number two is caffeine. For those of my sisters who love their caffeine shots, either in a hot mug of coffee first thing in the morning or from um, some herbal teas contain caffeine, even um, normal day-to-day -day black tea um, from Coke or soft, um, soft drinks or sodas that all contain caffeine. What should a pregnant woman do? So first of all, it is okay if you're pregnant and have some quantity of caffeine, that is okay. It's the quantity that you have to be careful about, okay? And so what we're told, the recommendation is that women, can, pregnant women, can have up to 200 milligrams per day. So what is 200 milligrams per day of caffeine? That's what's considered safe. So if you're just joining, we're talking about do's and don'ts in pregnancy. And that's what this particular stream is related to. If you're coming, if you're um, coming with any questions not really related to the topic, I apologize. I'm not going to be able to deal with them. Please, if there's any urgent question, please, please contact a health care provider for advice. 
um, I don't give advice about medical health on YouTube. It's just not ethical. If it's something that is not urgent, but you wanted to get some direction about them, please feel free, send us a question via the email health information service on our website and we can attend to that for you. But really appreciate you if you're listening and hoping that this information is useful to you. So we are talking about caffeine. So you said about 200 milligrams a day of caffeine. What does that look like? OK, so in a mug, in your standard mug of coffee, you have about 100 milligrams. So you can get away with two standard mugs of coffee, instant coffee. Um, they're in a can of Coke. So in a can of Coca-Cola, you can get about 40 milligrams. But listen. You don't have to max it out at 200. Moderation is key. So I want to encourage, please be moderate, okay? So we're saying that if you have, if you love taking your caffeine, if you love the taste, you can have a moderate amount of it. But excessive quantities can be harmful to yourself and to the baby. So please, please watch for that. So that's coffee, that, or that's caffeine, and that's alcohol. Now, what about other types of foods? So now we're talking about things like... Um, Let's talk about things like cheese, dairy, dairy, cheese, dairy. Let's talk about these because some there's some some bodies or some people believe that women, pregnant women should not have cheeses at all. And the reason for that is because mainly unpasteurized cheeses can be problematic. And the reason for that is because they can expose you to bacterial infections that can pass to the baby. Remember your early pregnancy stage is when baby's organs are first developing and they continue to grow throughout your pregnancy. But that first trimester is so crucial. Ex um, and, um, exposing your baby to um, unpasteurized, to, sorry, to these bacteria through unpasteurized dairy, whether it's cheeses, even unpasteurized milk or yogurt, um, ice cream, please, please, avoid avoid them completely okay so if you're if you're a cheese fan if you're really if you're addicted or you're having cravings for cheese then we can go into more detail and break it down but generally anything that's unpasteurized it's not been carefully sterilized please avoid it and the same goes for raw uncooked foods whether that is deli meat or raw eggs and i know i have people listening to me from different parts of the world in some countries you have very well regulated food industries where you're very confident about the sterility and the pasteurization process which is fine but that's not the case in every country so i really want to make sure I, and emphasize this that if you're um, if you're fortunate enough to live in a country where the regulation is very good and the food industry, um, the kind of foods that appear on your grocery in the supermarket store um, um, shelves, and we're quite sure that the food is exactly as it is, it's fresh or it's well, it's pasteurized, then, um, you know, you can confidently take such foods like uh, um, raw eggs. But I would strongly recommend to avoid it while you're pregnant because the risk of infections like salmonella or listeria infections, again, this can cause serious illness. Um, sometimes this can pass directly to the baby and cause problems. So avoid if it's not well cooked, if it's not heated well cooked avoid it just to, for the sake of doubt it's it's nine months okay it's nine months after which you can go back to your uh, eating whatever you wish to eat but when it comes to the health of your baby please let's be very careful again if you're in doubt please check in with your provider because like i said i have people listening to me from all over the country yes i practice in the uk so some of the advice that we'll give will be tailored specifically to what our food industry and regulation of our food industry is like in the united kingdom but i'm conscious it might not be the same in other parts of the world so i will give that kind of advice about be cautious with foods that are not pasteurized they've not been carefully sterilized or treated or processed to get rid of harmful bacteria or germs so the other thing the other thing about foods refers to unwashed food so like your fruits or vegetables um things like carrots for example that you might want to that you can eat raw or eating salads if you're not sure of the source, if you're not sure how it's been prepared or cooked, if it's not been prepared in your own home by yourself or by, you know, anyone in your home and you're confident about how well it's been washed, do not eat it. OK, because these can, again, lead to certain infections that could affect you. Um, some women could develop um, bad stomach infections and um, tummy bugs as a result that can lead to conditions like dehydration and make you feel very ill. 
um, and some cases go on to affect the baby. So we don't want, you don't want to go into that kind of direction. It's better to avoid such things. And that's what I would say about foods. Um, what are the type of foods? So we've talked about alcohol, caffeine. We've talked about cheese. We've talked about dairy. Um, let me just have a quick look. Is there anything else that you should be? Um, so the same applies for meat. Um, any meat that's not been carefully, that's not hot, that's not that's undercooked. Watch out for those kind of meats. Um, there's some the pates, for example, that are um, not cooked um, foods that are sort of raw mixes of different foods. Be careful because um, they might be there might be some risk of getting germs in these when they're not cooked. They might have parasites in them that live in them because they're not cooked. Uh, oh, there's also a mention about liver and liver products which contain vitamin A. So eating that in excessive quantity. So you need to be very careful about the quantity if you're, if you're, if you're wanting to eat that kind of food. Please be careful. Please ask um, and try to avoid. Again, eating in moderation is a safe way to go. But if you've got any concerns about the quantity that you're taking in, if you've got any concerns about whether that food might be harmful to you or to your baby, please ask. OK. Um, oh, and then, of course, there's fish. Fish is a big one because some people think pre you're pregnant. Don't eat any fish. Well, so there is a there is a caution with that. OK. Um, number one, moderation is always key. Okay, moderation is key. Number two, cooked. If it's cooked, well heated, thoroughly heated, you're likely safe. Okay. However, there are some types of fish, for example, tuna that contains mercury, uh, more mercury than other types of fish. So the recommendation is to limit the quantity that you eat in a week. Um, when you're pregnant, because you don't want to accumulate too much mercury, mercury in your system. And um, there's also advice about how much oily fish you can eat in a week, like um, salmon, mackerel, um, herring fish, um, simply because um, this fish may have more pollutants from the water um, in, their, in their flesh. And these pollutants could go ahead to cause harm to your baby if you eat excess amounts of them. So please, guys, I don't want anybody to get me wrong. I'm not saying that you can't have tuna or you can't have salmon. I'm saying be careful of the quantity, please. And feel free to go ahead and ask. You can ask us or you can ask your medical provider, your health providers, just so that you're clear on what is safe to do. Um, and a lot of all these um, studies are things that have come out in the last sort of 10, 20 years. And that's why they've created so much debate and can be potentially confusing for a newly pregnant lady who should really be enjoying that time of her life, but is being inundated with all manner of facts and stories about what she can have and what she can't have. Moderation is always key, but there are some things that you should just be careful about. And a key example is about eating raw food that's not been properly cooked or undercooked food or washing your fruits and vegetables, just to name a few examples. Again, for specifics, please make sure you reach out to your health provider or please contact us at Ask Away Health to clarify or provide more information. So I think we've covered it pretty much on food. I think that's covered it. So the next myth is that pregnant women should not take any medicines. So I like this one in particular because, oh gosh, this one is to the point where you want to give a lady certain medication and they refuse to take it because they are worried that it might harm their babies. Um, so how do I address it? So it's always a matter of weighing the benefits versus the risk. So if you need to have a particular treatment and we can give it to you in um, quantities where it's not going to harm your baby, then you can have that medication. And in fact, there are quite a few, well, not just a few, there are quite a number of medicines that women, pregnant women can safely have that will not cause harm to their babies. But because they're afraid, they're just putting anything um, you know, that is medicine into their bodies will harm their babies. They suffer, if you like, they bear the stress. Now, it's all very good being heroic and, you know, trying to bear something, but keeping you in pain or keeping you uncomfortable or unwell, not treating you for the duration of your pregnancy because you're trying to hold out and protect your baby, that could create a state, a state of stress that's also not good for your pregnancy. So I think it's a matter of educating ourselves all together, both people who are patients and both us health um, and also us healthcare practitioners about the best way to go. Um, I, I've come across a website I'd like to share. Let me see if I can 
let me just remove this and see if I can share that site with you because I think it's a really useful site for um, women. <clears throat> it's called Bumps and it's the best use of medicine in pregnancy. And I just wanted you to know about it. I hope it is showing on the screen. So if you wanted to Google it, it's um, best use of medicines in pregnancy or bumps. This is a lovely site that um, that's actually meant for patients okay it's full of patient information so as much as possible they try to write about it or they try to put the information in very easy to understand format and if there's any medicine that you're concerned about you wanted to get clarification about is this safe for me what's the evidence what research is there available this is a site i'd recommend um it is prepared the, the leaflet the information leaflets on this site are produced by the uk teratology information service which is a not-for-profit national organization um, based in the UK. And like I said, it's meant for patients. And you can find, you can go and search for different medicines. So let's see. Um, if you're searching for different medicines, for example, somebody's got hay fever. Uh, I just searched for pyritin, which is the same name as chlorphenamine, so that you can see that on the screen. It gives you information about this drug, what it is. Is it safe to take it in pregnancy? Can it cause birth defects in the baby? Can take in it in pregnancy cause miscarriage? Um, and so on. So you have different bits of information and it available on this website. So if you have any questions around a particular around a particular um, drug that you're interested in or you're concerned about, you wanted to learn more about it, then please visit that website and um, it will give you more information. So where are we? We're talking about medicines. Okay. Now, so what else is, is there to say about medicine? So that it is possible um, if you need to have certain medicines, um, then we will weigh the risk versus benefits. Of course, there are some medicines that are completely not acceptable or recommended in pregnancy because we know that they can cause harm to the baby. So those medicines, you would not even be on them. We would not keep you on them or prescribe them. I think what is more, sort of more probably more relevant to this discussion of over-the-counter drugs that you might need for things like a um, headaches, for example, moderate headaches. And we know that headache is um, common in pregnancy and it can be caused by several different things. Some are innocent causes because of your hormone levels. Um, others might be because of dehydration if you're not taking enough fluid. But headaches could also happen because of preeclampsia. So it's important that we're very clear. I'm not saying that if a woman continues to have very bad headaches, you should keep taking paracetamol. You should seek medical advice promptly. But if it's a mild headache, an occasional one, and you want to get some relief from that, using paracetamol from time to time is not going to cause any harm to yourself or your baby. It's when it becomes excessive, you know, regular use of it um, for several days on end or for weeks on end, and that's when we get worried about the potential effect. Um, and we want to clarify, are we treating the right thing? Should you be having some alternative um, to use for treating this problem? The other medicines like ibuprofen, that's a um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug um, that's also common, um, commonly sold over the counter, that's used for treating muscle aches and pains and strains and things we recommend that's avoided when you are pregnant. Um, but women could also suffer from things like hay fever and need something for allergy. Um, and so you can the question is about, can I use things like pyritin or purities that's sold over the counter? The recommendation is to use it with caution and only if it's absolutely needed, because sometimes your hay fever may be relieved by other non-medication um, um, alternatives. But if you're struggling and that's not happening, you're not getting relief, then with caution, with the advice of your doctor, then you may be able to use these options. The same goes to medicines like um, for heartburn, like Peptac or Gaviscon. Now, these conditions like heartburn, constipation is another one that's very common in pregnancy and all because your body is making lots of progesterone, which is good to support the pregnancy, but it slows down things like your bowel. Your bowel gets very sluggish. So what do you do? Apart from making sure that you're taking plenty of water to drink, lots of fiber-rich food, vegetables and fruits, um, and maintaining 
good physical activity, all this will help your bowel to go. But sometimes you might need to have something to help your bowels. You might need something to help the heartburn. So you should be able to take, if you need to have fiber gel or lactulose, um, are medicines, gentle medicines to help your bowel. Um, Gaviscon is something that can also help women with um, heartburn. So there are solutions. And the answer to this is women can have certain medicines if they need to have them in pregnancy so we shouldn't punish women and say that well because you're pregnant you can't have any medicine i think that can be very unfair and a lot of women um suffer unfairly on um because they continue to have these symptoms which could be helped with certain medicines but they're not having access to those medicines so the next one i think we're nearly halfway through and if you're just joining me thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to the channel if you're finding this useful is this the next one yeah okay so the next one oh it's flicking from one to the other. I think this is the next one. Is it not? <laughs> Have I just got a mixture of different ones? Okay, let's leave that. That's causing confusion. Let's look at this one. This is a nice one. This is a very interesting one um, that women should avoid hot baths or hot saunas or hot tubs. See, there's so many things. I don't know where this has come from, but they're worried that the heat might affect the baby the heat might hurt the baby. There is absolutely no evidence that um, women using the hot tub or using having a hot bath can do anything to the baby. There's no evidence at all with regards to that. Um, so women can go ahead if they want to have a hot bath or, hot, or, or go into the sauna, they can certainly go ahead to use those facilities to help them to relax. Um, it's important to avoid overheating, of course, because you don't want to get dehydrated. But taking a warm bath occasionally, using a sauna occasionally is generally considered safe. So please, let's just knock that myth out of the parlor. That is not, um, that is not right for women who are pregnant. So the next one is about hair products, cosmetics, um, and says women should avoid hair dyes. Um, and I think I think it's really important to um, to encourage women. What is the best? What what should you do? Um, should you color your hair when you're pregnant? Are hair dyes safe? Uh, because of course, some of these agents contain chemicals that could cause allergy reactions. Um, some of them um, may may in some cases affect women. Now, we don't have too much studies, too many studies, but generally the belief is that the chemicals in these dyes are not highly toxic. So they could be toxic, but not highly. Um, and if you wanted to color your hair when you're pregnant, then you could do, but avoid doing anything in the first trimester in particular. So wait if you must, if at all you must. Because, of course, you can decide to do this after you've had your baby. But if you're specifically asking about getting, about doing this while you're pregnant, then please avoid the first trimester. Um, because then the risk of any chemical substances getting into your blood, cr crossing your placenta to harm your baby is much, much lower. Um, and, of course, think about the possibility of allergy, the possibility of your body's response. So be careful with that. Some um, specialists suggest um, just highlighting the hair so you're not putting maximum amounts of the dye into your hair. That also reduces the risk. Um, and the chemicals just go into your hair. They're not going into your scalp or your bloodstream. So there's some things that if you if you must go down the route of dyeing your hair, there's some things that you could do that can be helpful for that purpose. Um, and this is related to something else, which is about whether women should avoid cleaning products when they are pregnant. I, this was really this is really funny when I came across this, but there's some um, cleaning products products that could be harmful and not just the, not just the liquid but the smell the um, vapor the vapor that comes out of this, these cleaning products. So um, there's a thinking that they may be harmful to pregnant women because they inhale the vapor, could the fumes go in and cause problems, affect the baby. Now the thinking is that if you're using such products, you're being careful to use them in well ventilated area, they should it shouldn't cause any problem. Um, so it's about being, I think it's about this, in this particular case, I think it's about being sensible. I think it's about being reasonable and thinking of what can you actually 
what 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 possible harm could you come so when you're spraying the cleaning material make sure the windows are open spraying away spraying it away from your face if you feel strong and well enough to do some cleaning um don't be afraid you're wearing your gloves you're protecting yourself don't be afraid to do so if you wanted to 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 go ahead and do that okay so we've talked about cleaning products we've talked about hair dye what about travel that's another one so travel should women avoid travel when they are pregnant so really really important um question about it so it is safe for women to travel if they're to, to travel if they're pregnant okay as long as they're taking sensible precautions about not exerting themselves with the rush going back and forth of the travel of the journey um, and they've, they've checked their airline, always make sure you've checked whatever airline information because they will have restrictions. For example, they don't want you traveling after 37 weeks. I'm sure that's fairly common knowledge, but please always check um, what is um, what the, your restriction your airline may have. They will generally say that if your pregnancy is straightforward, um, you're not likely to have any harm from the changes in air pressure. Um, you're not likely to have any worry that the flying will cause a miscarriage or early labor if, if your pregnancy is straightforward. Now, if you have a pregnancy that may be complicated, um, for example, if you're carrying um, twin preg if you're carrying twins, the risk of, of delivering earlier, of going into labor earlier is higher if you're carrying a multiple pregnancy. So they'll probably want, not want you to travel after 32 weeks. Some airlines may put that kind of restriction. So please be aware of that. Um, the other thing to be um, concerned about or the other thing to remember, um, a couple of things to remember with travel are about, one, developing blood clots in the in different parts of the body. So developing blood clots, for example, deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism is, is more common if you're pregnant. Simply being pregnant um, and within six weeks of delivery, you're at an increased risk of developing this. And this is a very serious condition because what it means is that a blood clot can go into your lungs and block your um, um, air supply, uh, blood supply to the area, compromise your breathing. And if it's not treated, can cause death. It's a, it's a medical uh, emergency. This condition is more likely to happen just because the woman is pregnant. This condition also is likely to happen if you're flying, especially long distance flights. So the longer you are in the air, the longer your journey is, the more likely to ha you have blood clots. So the important thing about travel advice is if it has to happen, make sure it's not a very long flight. If it has to be that you're staying in the air for a prolonged period of time, you're taking time, you're, you're getting up, you're carrying out certain sort of movements or exercises to keep yourself active on, on board and to prevent the risk of developing blood clots. And um, the other thing about travel is using, um, uh, what do you call them, the seat belts, which yes, you must use your seat belt. That is a precaution that's necessary to protect you and your baby. You can have extended length seat belts to co go across your bump if that's needed. So you can always request for that. Um, and then the other thing is about going through airport scanners and not to have any concerns that they can do. Radiation can cause any harm. There's not enough radiation to cause harm to you and your baby while going through them. So these are some of the myths around preg um, pregnancy and traveling that I thought were interesting to explore. Now, the other one, which um, I think is on this, is it on this one or here? I just wanted to get the picture up, is about avoiding sex. Yes, what what's the story behind sex? So pregnant women can have sex when they're pregnant. <laughs> Generally, it is safe for a woman to have sex when she's pregnant. Um, but there are some situations where we would recommend that a woman avoid sex. For example, if she's experienced bleeding um, and heavy bleeding when she, in her pregnancy. Um, so some women may have their placenta lying low and the whole action of intercourse could increase the risk of more bleeding so she may be asked to have she may be asked to avoid or they may be asked to avoid sex if that's the case or if there are problems if the waters have broken because that can increase the risk of infection if you're carrying twins um or if you've gone into labor early in the past because that could stimulate um that the activity intercourse can stimulate the womb 
cause contractions to happen um, and that might provoke um, lab um, early labor. So generally, if you're having a straightforward, uncomplicated pregnancy, pregnancy, it does not mean that you cannot have sex. Sex is not going to harm the baby. There's actually no communication between your partner's organ and the baby. Um, the baby can tell what's going on. Um, it, you may find it useful to have certain positions, to take up certain positions. So it might be worthwhile exploring that with your partner to see what is comfortable for you. Um, so, for example, lying on the side instead of lying, um, instead of them lying on you because of the pressure of the bump. Sorry, I'm being very graphic, but just to make the points clear. Um, but yeah, that's these are some of the myths that we come across um, when women are pregnant, when they first fall pregnant and you start hearing all sorts of things. I think by far the more common things are around what you can eat or drink, you know, things like the caffeine, um, maybe exercise, eating for two. I think those are sort of the more common ones. I think travel is also a big one. But guys, I've tried to cover that just to give us some idea because women still have um, a lot of information and misinformation that's fed. Um, a lot of what I've mentioned here today uh, is backed by research and I'm happy to drop the link. So please, if you want to read further about them, I will leave the links in the description box so you can check them out in your free time. Of course, if you wanted to get any more information, either get some clarity or some information that is specific to yourself, please come and contact us on the health information service. Let me just show that to you. Bear with me. Let me just show that to you. So if you come to the website, let me share the screen so you can see what I mean. But if you go to askawayhealth.org, um, yeah, so if you go to, so let's share that. So if you go to askawayhealth.org, yep, if you go to, this is the homepage. And if you come to that, uh, just below my picture here, click here to ask me a question. Then you can, then you can come to the health information service. So here, this is the opportunity you have to ask a question and clarify something. Uh, you know, you've got space to put in what your question is all about and um, to be very clear. Um, and then we can come back to you, come back to you to provide some specific guidance for you on what the question might be about. Okay. Right, there we go. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Um, and if you're watching this on the replay, please share with me in the comments because I think there's so many different ideas we have from different parts of the globe. It'll be good to hear what things women are told to, to do or not do while they're pregnant. And is there any facts? Are they, are, they any, are they backed by facts? Or is this just culture or some beliefs that have been passed over time and you just feel you have to do it because you're being told by a good friend or family member, this is the way it's always been done. Well, guys, thank you so much for um, staying with me for this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to be um, continuing our regular live streams, hopefully from um, today onwards. Um, so join us again next week, Friday, for another live stream topic. And um, of course, we do have regular video uploads going on during the week, so they may be short or they may be long form content, usually on a Thursday. But please click the notification bell so that whenever we go live, you know and you can join the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.